welcome back to the class on algebraic arithmetic in this lecture we are going to discuss about phasor diagram of a three phase induction motor here we are developing the phasor diagram of a three phase induction motor at two different phases one is the static condition other one is the running condition this is the induction motor this is the shatter winding and the shatter winding three phase winding is placed which is displaced from 120 degree in a space for that shatter winding if you apply the three phase voltage the three phase currents are passing through the shatter winding the rotating field is creating from the shatter wind it is running with a synchronous speed whose magnitude is equal to 1.5 times the phi n when this field is rotating in a shatter there is a rate of change of flux linkage on the rotor conduct as well as shatter conductor there is a self induced voltage in a shatter of the winding and a mutual induced voltage in a rotor wind so because of this flux these two voltages are induced one is in a shatter and the one is in a rotor the angle between the flux and the voltage is a uh, 90 degrees the voltage always lags the flux by 90 degrees now when you are going to draw the phasor diagram initially we have taken the x axis and y axis the flux we have taken on the x axis so because of this flux nothing but the flux which is rotating here that we represented with a phi because of this flux there is a voltage induced with shatter winding as well as rotor winding those vector this is e2 this is e1 all the vectors are rotating in a anti clockwise direction the angle between the flux and the e1 e2 is 90 degrees this voltage lags of this flux phi 90 degrees because of this flux only the two voltages are induced one in a shatter winding another one in a rotor winding see here we have taken one more phasor that is a e1 dash e1 dash is nothing but a just opposite to the e1 so whenever the voltage is induced in a shatter winding e1 that is opposite the supply voltage v nothing but a which is causing a voltage drop in a supply voltage this quantity is nothing but a the voltage drop in a supply voltage due to the e1 now it is taking a current of no load current if we resolve this current into two components one is the horizontal component and the one is the vertical component this is magnetizing current this is the core loss current so because of this current the rotating field is created in a induction motor so because of this current there is some amount of core loss will be after induction motor now when this flux is rotating there is a voltage induced in rotor winding that is e2 because of the rotor balls are short circuited this voltage will be driving a current through the rotor ball that current lags this voltage by phi2 this is i2 this angle is nothing but a phi2 now it is reverse this one because when this current is passing through the rotor ball there is some amount of flux will be creating from the rotor ball that is opposite the main flux to compensate that one the shatter will be taking a one more current that is a i2 dash this is i2 dash i2 dash is just opposite to the i2 whose magnitudes are equal but both are opposite now if you find the phasor sum of these two that is nothing but a shatter current that is phi s now when this current is passing through the shatter winding the shatter winding has a two parameters one is the resistance another one is the leakage rate so for this voltage e1 dash if we add the resistance drop this is is rs where rs is nothing but a per phase rotor resistance of a shatter winding is is nothing but a shatter current so from the end of the e1 dash i have to draw a is rs which is parallel to the is so one more parameter is the shatter winding has a leakage reaction also so when the current is passing through the shatter winding there is some amount of voltage will be dropping across the leakage reaction of a shatter winding so perpendicular to the is rs i have to draw a one vector that is is axis here you have to take it as j because the angle between the is rs and is axis is the 90 degree to represent that one here you have to take it as a j now the phasor sum of these two is nothing but a shatter impedance drop that is represented with a black color vector now if you find the phasor sum of e1 dash and this vector that is nothing but a applied voltage so whatever the voltage applied to the shatter winding the some amount of voltage will be dropping across the e1 dash the some amount of voltage will be going to compensate the resistance drop and some amount of voltage will be going and compensate the leakage reaction drop so if we add the the three components nothing but e1 dash isrs and j is axis gives the v1 
Now come to the rotor side. This is the rotor current which is passing through the rotor winding at a standstill. When this current is passing through the rotor, there is a voltage drop in a rotor resistance that is in phase with I2. So draw one phaser that is in phase with I2. This is I2 RR. Where RR is nothing but a per phase rotor resistance. I2 is nothing but a per phase rotor current at a standstill condition. When the rotor current is passing through the rotor winding, there is some amount of voltage will be dropped in a rotor leakage reaction that is perpendicular to the I2 R2. I will draw one vector here such a way that up to the E2, J I2 X. Now from this feather diagram, we can say very easily that E2, nothing but the voltage induced in rotor winding, it will be compensating the resistance drop and also it will be compensating the rotor reaction. This is a feather diagram of a Reverse induction motor at a standstill condition. We are going to develop the equation, scatter side. V1 equal to, from this feather, V1 equal to E1 dash plus ISRF plus JISXS, this vector. Take the IS is common. So we are getting the V1 equal to E1 dash plus IS into RS plus JXS. Here, the scatter current. The scatter current equal to I2 dash plus I0. The no load current I0 equal to IM plus IC. Where IM is nothing but a magnetization current, whereas IC is nothing but a pore loss current. The angle between E1 dash and IM is 90 degrees, and the angle between E1 dash and IC is 0 degrees. This is the reactive current. This is the active current. Now come to the rotor side. When you come to the rotor side, this rotor voltage E2 equal to I2 RR plus J I2 X2 from this phasor diagram. Take the I2 common, we are getting the RR plus J X. These are the voltage equations we got it from the phasor diagram for the scatter side as well as the rotor side. Now we are going to see the phasor diagram of induction motor in running condition. Whenever you are giving the three phase operator the scatter winding, the rotative field is creating. This rotative field is linking with the both stator winding and rotor winding. A self-induced voltage in the stator winding and mutually induced voltage in a rotor winding. These two voltages lack mutual flux by 90 degrees. Whenever the voltage is induced in rotor, that voltage will be driving a current to the rotor box. Whenever current carrying conductor plays magnetic field, every conductor experiences a force. All forces collectively torque is developed at the axis. The torque drives the rotor in the same direction of the rotating. But rotor never catches the speed of a scatter flux. It always lags the scatter flux. The x-axis and y-axis we have taken. And the x-axis again we have taken the mutual flux. Because of the mutual flux, the two voltages are in use. That is E1 and ER also because it is running condition. The angle between the pi and E1 is a 90 degree. E1 dash is nothing but a, the voltage drop in a scatter winding due to the E1. This is I0. Again, this I0 can be resolved to two components. One is magnetization current, another one is the pore loss current. This is IR. This current is nothing but a rotor current in running condition. This is lags the ER by pi R degrees. Later, we are going to draw the ER on the negative y axis. Pi R is nothing but a angle between the IR and ER. So, to compensate the running rotor current, the stator will be taking extra current that is IR dash. If we find the phasor sum of these two, that we're getting the IS scatter current. Once you got the scatter current, I will draw one phasor from the tip of the E1 dash and parallel to the IS, that is ISRS. Perpendicular to the ISRS, I will draw one phasor that is nothing but a JIS axis. Phasor sum of these two is nothing but a scatter impedance drop. If we find the phasor sum of this vector and E1 dash that gives the supply voltage feather V1. Now come to the rotor side. IR R drop. This is IR feather. The rotor winding also has a some amount of resistance. The, the voltage will be dropped across the resistance. That is IR RR. That is always in phase with the IR. That's perpendicular to this one. I draw a one phaser up to the y axis that is j ir xr where ir is nothing but a per phase rotor current in running condition xr is nothing but a per phase rotor leakage reactions in running condition now phasor sum of ir rr plus j ir xs is nothing but a er 
nothing but whatever the voltage induced in the rotor winding during the running condition that should be compensated the resistance drop as well as a leakage reaction now we are going to write the equation from the scatter side so from this figure we can write it very easily v1 equal to e1 dash plus is into rs plus j xs where is equal to ir dash plus i not where i not is nothing but a no load current taken with induction motor ir dash is nothing but a rotor current referred to the stator phasor sum of these two is nothing but a stator current when you come to the rotor side the purpose voltage induced the rotor winding ir equal to ir into rr plus j xr so if you observe this phasor diagram almost all the phasor diagram of the transformer and induction motor is same but here we develop the phasor diagram of induction motor at a at a standard steel condition and the running condition what are the differences we can find it at a standard steel condition and running condition the magnitude of ir ir dash and er and stator current all these values are lesser when compared to the standard steel the theta r theta 1 also will be less theta r not is nothing but a, it is angle between the e1 dash and i not cos of that angle is nothing but a no load pocket theta 1 is nothing but a, the angle between the e1 dash and i s that is theta 1 cos of that angle is nothing but a power factor of a induction motor with a loaded condition these are the two phasor diagrams during during the stress condition as well as the running condition thank you very much if you have any doubt you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my youtube channel so that i am always welcome to answer all your